Well, we're going to move on to our next speaker for this evening. She's an amazing, warm-hearted individual who is cozying up in the northeast of England as we speak in uh, lockdown mode, tier number three. Passionate about improving access to high-quality local and national career support for young people and adults. Dr. Deirdre Hughes, OBE, specializes in lifelong guidance policies, research and practice at an international, national and regional level. She was commissioner at the UK Commission for Employment and Skills in 2011 and 2015 and chair of the National Career Council in England 2012 to 2014. Deirdre, as a UK expert, is lifelong guidance in European Centre for the Development of Vocational Education 2017 till present. She is pro she's a prolific writer, researcher, and policy advisor promoting equality, diversity, and inclusion. She is an associate fellow at the University of Warwick Institute for Employment Research. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to listen to another amazing, powerful, warm-hearted speaker by the person of Dr. Deirdre Hughes. Please put your hands together for Deirdre. Well, thank you very much, Action Jackson. I am really loving uh, the soiree uh, so far. And thank you so much for inviting me. I'm very honoured and, and very humbled. Um, I was asked to uh, reflect really on what does it take to be a game changer? And actually, how do you stand out in uncertain times? And really, Shay, who I've had the privilege of uh, working with Shay as a commissioner, at the UK Commission for Employment and Skills, always so inspirational and with such wise words. And he's brought to you 10 key leadership themes. So we haven't rehearsed this at all, but I'm gonna bring you five C's, the five C's of, I think, what it takes to be a game changer and what it takes to look after yourself and look after your career and your, your own livelihood and your well-being. So, you know, the theme already has been that uh, we're living through what are called VUCA times, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. And for some, uh, most of us, it's been a difficult year. No matter what your circumstances are, the pandemic has impacted on everyone's lives in some sort of shape or, or form. Whether you've maybe seen your industry collapse, maybe you're currently furloughed, maybe you're navigating working from home uh, alongside your homeschooling with children. I have a three-year-old granddaughter in the background in this household. So at any point I might hear her going to bed and you'll hear her lovely uh, dulcet tones. Uh, so we're all our circumstances, everything has changed. Maybe, Today, you're coping with loneliness um, of the situation. You know, it's lonely not having a lack, of, uh, not having social interaction, being able to give someone a, a hug, being able to um, have a coffee with someone. So I want to really just, first of all, congratulate Marenica and Kenny for bringing us all together tonight. The Invoca times, these volatile, uncertain, complex, amb ambiguous times. We as a society um, are already showing signs that we're adaptable and that we're resilient. And I know that those are two key themes uh, for this evening soiree, that this adaptability and resilience, we have as a human uh, race, we have shown ourselves to be adaptable and to be resilient, um, to make these significant uh, changes. And ultimately, those two key words, adaptability and resilience, that's what it takes to be a game changer. Now I'll come on to what does being a game changer actually mean? How do we define that? But I think there are uh, five C's that I'm going to just share with you and I'm really keen to hear your thoughts about which of the five C's that I'm about to share with you. Um, are, are your starting point in terms of where you are now. So these five C's are based on international research. I've been very fortunate to work with colleagues in the University of Ohio um, in the School of Medicine. 
where they have spent quite a lot of time looking at issues to do with career development and issues to do with how uh, do you guide and support individuals with their career, their identity, their sense of uh, what makes them have a career. And the first thing I would say to you before I set out the five C's is just to say that career is a sequence of life and work experiences over time. Everyone has a career of some sort. And I think this is a really important point because we all start in different uh, places. But I always say the man or woman who perhaps um, uh, we, we paid for our petrol uh, at, the, at, at the petrol station or the person who serves us, you know, a cup of coffee in Starbucks or whatever, or the person who's been cleaning the floor to make it nice for all of us, that every one of us have a career. It's just that we look at it through a particular lens, but it's unique to all of us. So that's the first thing to say, that uniqueness of you is really important. So here are the five C's based on international research around career adaptability. The first C is about concern. The extent to which you're thinking about your future, your future planning. Now, when we talk about concern, you could say concern is about your engagement in thinking about the future and whether you're bothered or not. Because the research shows that people who are indifferent to their futures or indifferent to the work that they do, that actually there's quite a lot to be done to actually switch from feeling totally indifferent to actually feeling empowered. And so concern is a really important thing in a positive um, sense. So how concerned are you about your, your future, the work that you do, the passion that you have or otherwise for the work that you do? Now, the second one I love, and that's something that defines me as an individual, which is curiosity. The extent to which you're curious about exploring your possible self and the fit between you and the world of work and the opportunities that are out there. So my life, and my work, um, which has spanned uh, sort of 35 plus years in the world of work, if not maybe more, I've always been curious about how do people get jobs? Because I lived in Northern Ireland at the time of the troubles when actually a line of sight to work for, for some was easy and for others was less so. And so I think if you can find your curiosity in something like Maranica has, and indeed other people here, be curious, always ask those questions and try and connect that opportunities to yourself, your possible self. The third one is a bit more tricky, but you might feel that you're confident in doing this. And this is about the control that you have, the sense of personal responsibility. For some people, control is about well, actually, I have this done onto me and therefore, you know, I can't change things. But I think there are some situations that we can't change. But what we can do is we can think about personally, how can we be responsible for the things that we can change? And one practical example is imagine you had a sheet of paper and you were to draw a circle now around who is in your network, who is there. It might be your mother, your brother, your friend, whoever. But if you drew another circle and you think about who would I want to have in my network? Who would I want to be that sort of person that gives me these positive energy to help me become greater than I am at present? And I think that's really important around personal responsibility in the sense of having control, you taking control around particularly your network. The next C is all about your confidence. Really interested to hear how confident uh, our audience are this evening. This self-belief that you can implement choices and set 
uh, goals. You can achieve set goals. And I think a lot of what Marenica is doing is inspiring us to know that it, it really is about us taking small steps to be able to achieve our, our goals. And the last C is about commitment. The opportunities that you find that you can commit to, to follow through, that will just take you that stage further in your own career development, your own personal growth, your happiness, and most importantly, your well-being. And if you want to read about these five C's, I'll pass on to Marenica a few links and you can have a little look at some stories around how people have applied these five C's um, in their, their life. So um, the big question is, OK, we've got these five C's. Where are you uh, on these? The big question is, what skills and experience do we need to be a game changer? And I'm going to say it depends on the game uh, that you're playing and the situation that you genuinely um, that, that you want to change. So there can be a big game, which is I want to be at the top of my profession and I want to be there as quickly as I can. And that is my big game. That is my big goal. But the other game might be that you want to get a good work life balance. You want time with your kids. Um, you know, you want to get that balance between having enough money to put bread on the table, but actually having a good life, a quality life that suits you. That's not to say that at the very top, you don't have a good life and a good quality, but remember everyone's career is unique to them. That sequence of life and work experiences over time. So my first message would be be brave. Um, do, doing things that sometimes feel scary. When I left Northern Ireland, um, you know, I the first I'd ever been was on holiday once in uh, Palmanova when I was 18. I'd never moved out of uh, Coleraine where I grew up. So it can be scary. But actually, if you push yourself out of your comfort zone, this is the definition of bravery. Push yourself out of your comfort zone and do really what feels scary but right for you. Treat setbacks as opportunity to learn and develop. We've all had setbacks in life. We'll continue to have setbacks for as long as we live. Life is always like that. But just treat them as this is an opportunity to learn, to grow, to sort of do our best to sort of think about, well, okay, that didn't work. What's our plan B? I'm a great believer in having a safety net always have a plan B in case plan A doesn't work out. Build your network like you're doing tonight, connecting with all your colleagues, people all around, around the country and further afield, over 200 people. Build that network and, and work it. Surround yourself with people that will support you and challenge you, as Shay had, had said. And the final thing is put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to Go on to LinkedIn and make sure that that profile of yours is up to date and reach out to people, message people, you know, build that network. Because sometimes you think he or she would never respond to me because I, you know, they don't know me or they might think I, you know, I, I'm being a bit sort of sycophantic. But generally, in my experience, if you treat people with respect and dignity, you keep your dignity. And you're clear about your purpose. If you're connecting with somebody, what's your purpose? What's the one small thing that you either have in common or that you would like to um, discuss? Generally speaking, people are very, very receptive. I'm being very um, honest around my own experience as somebody who, you know, all those years ago when I was a young woman, a long time ago, you know, um, it was a big thing to to come to another country and and to set up life um, away from all the things that I was familiar with. And I would sort of also conclude by saying that if there's no one who looks like you or thinks like you, remember you bring a different perspective, and you can be a role model. And if you know there's no one else that you can find as a role model. You are that role model. You're the person that will inspire other people 
to take those steps to success. So for me, I'm going to end with a very funny quick note, which was that um, when I uh, moved to England, um, in Northern Ireland, everybody used to say hello when you walked down the street, it didn't matter who. And when I came to Bristol at the age of um, 20, I would walk down the street and say to everyone, hello. <laughs> and I would get a very, in the south of England, I'd get a very sort of um, quizzical look, who is this uh, crazy lady? But I never, ever uh, stopped that behaviour because I think saying hello to someone in the street or saying hello to another human being is a really uh, good way of showing that you're an open and welcoming person. And that if anyone ever needs that support in a way, having that disposition, in my experience, will serve you well. So be brave, um, think about those five C's and network and remember if you can't find the role model, you are the role model. So I wish you really well in um, your, your life and your work. And I'm sure that this network uh, will grow and continue. So thank you very much for inviting me. I feel very honored uh, to be with you all. Thank you so much, Deirdre. Wow, wow, wow. I'm just applauding here. You might just make me change my career now with all those five C's. Come on, that was beautiful.